The relationship between the cinematographer and the director, I don't think there is any particular answer to that. I think it, it changes from situation to situation. If you are working with Martin Scorsese, uh, he has an incredible eye and, how to, uh, and, uh, and the ability to tell stories visually. So pretty much you should shut up and do what he says uh, if you have a brain in your head. You know, I mean, I made all sorts of suggestions and we worked out things together, but basically the, the impulse comes from a director like Marty. There is no one answer to how do you get along with a director. Um, as far as I know, I never found one, I never particularly looked for one. Uh, it is, you just have to deal with each situation as it comes along. Uh, yeah, he was making a, uh, a low budget film in New York that summer of 76. He had to have a New York cameraman because of the union uh, arrangements that it was, the country's divided up between LA and New York. And he needed a cameraman who wasn't terribly expensive because it was a low budget movie. And he, he and Bobby were rising stars, but they were not huge stars yet, and this was a, a low budget movie. So we met and we talked and uh, we got along and he hired me. I, you know, you'd have to ask him why he hired me and not someone else, I don't know, but he hired me. Because we we seemed to me to get along well. We had many of the same reference points in, in movies. We were both admirers of Jean-Luc Godard and various other things. And so we seemed to hit it off and he hired me. I, you know, these things happen. Well, in between Taxi Driver and Rachel Bullitt did uh, the concert film Last Waltz. And actually, Last Waltz, he was going to hire Laszlo Kovacs, who, um, but he was still in the post-production of, of that movie. And, and Laszlo felt that he couldn't, for, or at least that was his, what he, that's what he told Marty, or he may have had other reasons, I don't know. And he said that he was just too swamped with stuff and he couldn't do all, he couldn't give his full attention that would be needed on Last Waltz. So Marty turned to, and, and hired me, but I was a second choice. I just happened to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. These things happen I, for reasons that, I, you know, you don't really know. Why did he hire me for um, Raging Bull? Because he knew plenty of other cinematographers and had used them. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, I'm delighted that he did, yeah. but I don't know the specific reason of why he hired me and not someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, they were probably, they were certainly older people who had more experience in black and white, since I had none. Uh, but for whatever reason, he did. He, and then he, when we were in pre-production, he said, what do you think? Should, do you think we should do it in black and white? And of course, not knowing anything about black and white, I immediately said yes. Because um, it seemed like the right thing to do. But why specifically Marty hired me, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was running around the background all wrapped up in, I was wrapped up in black velour so I wouldn't show. And you and, and shooting off old time flash bulbs from an old, uh, from an old still camera because you had to have them you had to have the flash last long enough so that at least some of the uh, shutter would be open. You know, I had a great time. I was wrapped up and I was sneaking around and I just shot off whenever I, whenever I felt like it. In fact, not all of my shots do come in because it was not tw 24 frames. So the shutter was open for an even shorter time, which was like, what, probably 72 frames. Mm -hmm. So the shutter was open only a very little time and a lot of those of my flashes didn't come off, but enough came off so you got the point.